Hey guys, in this video we'll be looking at the extraction of iron from its ore cassiterite. So stay tuned. Before we get into extraction of iron, let's just take a quick review of the different methods of extracting metals. Extraction of metals is mainly done in two ways. One is by electrolysis and these are metals that are more reactive than carbon, higher than carbon in the reactivity series of metal. I've done a video on reactivity series of metal if you want more details. And the other way is by heating with carbon. This is normally done in a furnace such as a blast furnace. And these are for metals that are less reactive than carbon. Let's get to tin. If the metal ore contains a high degree of impurity, then what is normally done first before the extraction process is the concentration process, the concentration of the ore, so that we remove a large portion of the impurity first. And one of the methods to achieve that is by froth flotation. So froth flotation, the purpose of it is to concentrate the ore. This device here, this in the middle is called an agitator. Compressed air is fed inside here and is released here. Now let's look at the parts. First, the ore is crushed and put into water together with frothing agents such as pine oil. So this helps the froth to form, the bubbles up here to form. And this is called the agitator. The compressed air is let out through the outlets here which creates the bubbles. Here is the froth and the froth is where the concentrated cassiterite will be. The principle here is based on the wettability of the ore. I'm not going to get into detail there. But what you need to know is that the ore will stick around the bubble and will float to the top. And what is left is the impurities. The impurities here, like such as sand and soil, will sink to the bottom. So this is how they separate out the ore from impurities. This ore here is still not pure. It still contains other impurities. Impurities are such as carbon and sulfur. They are still here. There will still be some sand and soil as well. But a lot of it would have sunk to the bottom. The next step is called roasting. Roasting is simply burning in oxygen. So what happens is the other impurities such as carbon and sulfur burns in oxygen and burns off because it becomes gas. Carbon will react with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Sulfur will react with oxygen to form sulfur dioxide and these gases will be released. And so what is left is a purer version of the cassiterite, of the tin 4 oxide. Once we obtain the purest form of tin 4 oxide that we can get, then we can go on to the reduction process using carbon. And this is normally done in a furnace. If you want to know more details about how a blast furnace works, please look at my video on the extraction of iron from its ore. But so this is done in any sort of furnace, such as blast furnace. And the concept is the same. So we use carbon. So carbon here acts as the reducing agent. When it reacts with carbon, tin comes out and carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide are produced. Carbon monoxide also acts as a reducing agent here to reduce the tin 4 oxide. Tin comes out and carbon dioxide is produced. So here you can look at carbon. Carbon becomes carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. Carbon here has gained oxygen and therefore it is oxidized. Carbon monoxide becomes carbon dioxide. So again, it gains oxygen and so it is oxidized. Since it itself is oxidized, it acts as the reducing agent. It steals the oxygen from the tin 4 oxide. And so tin 4 oxide will lose oxygen and become tin. So tin 4 oxide is reduced and since it itself is reduced, it acts as the oxidizing agent. That's it for this video guys. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please don't forget to hit the like button. It really does help to support me and my channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. I will be producing at least one video a week. I'll see you in the next video.